companies uh, want to hire you for for kind of the job you had as opposed to uh you know see you as a candidate who has the aptitude to to learn and expand in their role and and so they you know it's like the chicken and the egg they want you for a job you already had and if you didn't have that job you know how do you get that job that's the problem what's up guys let's see today my conversation with david raviv david is a vp at findings but more important he's also an influencer he runs a youtube channel he's a volunteer to run the isf chapter in new york He's been doing so many things to contribute back to the community. You're gonna see his position as an influencer, how important it is uh, to give back to the community as he is doing. Guys, if you enjoy this content, please smash the like button. And don't forget to subscribe and activate the notification bell so you don't miss anything in the future. Let's go. David, thank you very much for joining me today. Actually, thank you very much for accepting my, my invitation to be in my channel. David, you are a VP at Findies. You, actually, you, are doing, you, are, you have been doing so many things that actually I prefer if you can introduce yourself rather than having me say a lot of things about yourself. Sure. Thanks, Rodrigo. So much appreciated. And, uh, you know, as a fellow Canadian, I can tell you that uh, we all in this day and age do a bunch of stuff. I think we... we uh, we starting to call this the gig economy, right? People have their hands in different things. So, um, so I've been in the IT space, security specifically before. You know, before it was called cybersecurity, it was called IT security, and I've been uh, you know doing this since uh, early two thousands. Uh, started uh, in Toronto. It's part of the Hershey Group, which is one of the largest, fastest growing MSSPs in in the world these days, and just recently got acquired by a private equity firm. And then, uh, you know, relocated from Canada to the States, uh, was an uh, early employee at Proofpoint and, uh, you know, work at startups ever since. Uh, the, one of the recent ones was, uh, was uh, VP of business development uh, at a company called Hyper, who's uh, raised the Series A uh, and is part of the password, password authentication space as well. And uh, as of recently, um, I'm currently responsible for the North American operations for, for findings, a company set to uh, to fix the supply chain uh, risk management mm -hmm. issues that a lot of like uh, large enterprise, uh, medium enterprise face. That's perfect. So a lot of years of experience, David, but even though with a lot of work that we know that we have in the cybersecurity world, even though you decide to create something very, very good, which is your channel right the cyber guild if i'm not mistaken but you the are also guild. guild and you are also coordinated the isf chapter and you started this last year january 2020 but you are also you founded the new york infosec meetup right back in yes. 2013 19. <laughs> so it's, it's funny you uh you just do you know you um you know some things take more times than others but uh you know we you know, if you ever watch uh, some of the motivation speakers like Schwarzenegger says, you know, you only need like six hours of sleep. And if you need more, you just have to sleep a little faster. Um, so so basically, that's it. And what's interesting about the, the information security meetup that I've been hosting these events uh, religiously uh, since 2013, uh, once a month. And the, the community grew to over 5,500 members, and um, the events were very large in New York City prior to COVID. Uh, I've had typically between 120 to 150 people attend each month. And uh, then uh, the Internet Security Forum, the ISF, is an organization that's been around for quite some time. And it's a non for profit, you know, very, very uh, high end organization that uh, provides some, some very um, interesting insight to the cyber community. Uh, using, uh, you know, their own research team. And so um, I uh, volunteered to, to promote and work with the, uh, the ISF, uh, specifically for the U.S. and Canada chapter right here. So uh, coming back to your question, you know, if, you're, if, you, um, if you love what you do and you're very interested in it, so none of it is, uh, is difficult, you know, you, uh, you just do what you need to do. And uh, I've been hosting these uh, series of podcasts ever since uh, COVID hit. Mm -hmm. um, and I admire your initiative to to do the same. I think that uh, we need more of that, and uh, it takes uh, 
you know, it takes a bit of uh, determination and getting out of your comfort zone and shell to do these again, to be exposed to the outside world. And, uh, you know, it's not easy. So I, I, I you know, I, I kudos to you for, for doing these. Couldn't be more aligned, David. But one thing that I would like to pick your brain, David, is uh, I, of course, I, I'm, I'm trying to engage with a lot of different areas in IT, right? Cybersecurity, big data, blockchain, all, 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 all sort, of, sort of things that you can imagine. But one thing that I realized is the, the leadership, the leaders, right, on the cybersecurity world, as you, uh, I think, Actually, I'm the cybersecurity world currently, and I've been seeing that actually these people are trying to engage more and more with a broader audience rather than the other areas in IT. I could be wrong, but I would like to pick your brain if you feel the same thing or this is something that you, you do not agree. No, I, I, I think you're correct. I also think that people in general these days have a hard time staying connected with their network on a professional level. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming it's also true for the personal level, but just since we're all, uh, you know, stuck at home, uh, isolated, it's hard to, to maintain these relationships. So I encourage people to just pick up the phone or set up a Zoom calls for no other reason than just to keep in touch because we used to be able to, uh, you know, to meet at events. So my, my events that I hosted in the city, um, you know, I, I'll bump into people that I haven't, you know, seen in a while and having conversations and, and you know, catch up on things. And, and this day and age is really tough. So I, I encourage people to, uh, you know, do these, you know, kind of uh, kind of frontal events where you have people just watch, but also, uh, you know, just pick up the phone and, and call people you haven't you haven't had a chance to talk to in a while and uh, maybe do some of these Zoom conversations as well. Because, again, it's easy to uh, just as well as easy to get out of touch in cybersecurity because things are moving so quickly and you have to maintain that um you know, kind of the uh, ear to the ground to see what the current events and current uh, happenings. You also, you should do that also on a professional level and keep in touch with uh, with the people that are part of your network. Uh, and it's, it's very critical. Um, you know, it's, it's critical, like, you know, prior to being isolated in an environment like this, but now it's even more critical to, to do so on a regular basis. And, and one reason why I think the leaders, uh, the cybersecurity leaders are more are more engaging in this. OK, let's spread the, our word. Let's spread the knowledge is because we know that uh, we do have more open positions than people that can, can fill this position. So we need to start, OK, let's try to pull out more and more resources to this world to help us. And we, we are not seeing right uh, cyber crimes dec dec decreasing along the years right actually it's completely the opposite it's keep increasing uh, I was reading last week one article from cybersecurity venture magazine and they predicted that this year uh, each at 11 seconds one person will be at attacked 11 seconds so like it's a nightmare Right? So we need more and more people. And I think the leaders in cybersecurity has already realized that, of course. And we are trying now, okay, let's try to pull as much of, as much resources that we can. And these kind of things is one way to do that, right? Different from other types of uh, areas in IT. What, what do you think about that, David? Yeah, no, I completely agree. So there's, there's, uh, there's a couple of areas here that you touch upon. So one is, yeah, you're right, there's kind of lack of security professionals out there, but it seems to be that there are uh, no lack of jobs in the kind of intermediary to advance uh, skill set. Uh, but uh, there seems to be less less of these, you know, kind of the entry level positions So people just uh, just finishing the A plus certification or or uh, or others, and then it's hard for them to get the kind of the initial, um, you know, initial position for them to kind of jump into the space. So that's one one area I think that uh, you know needs improvement. And uh, you know, the executives, everybody is talking about it because I think it's uh, I think we all realize it's a it's all about awareness, right? It's all about getting uh, you know, it takes a village to to uh, to be secure, and um, you know. Every malware is not about the technical aspect of it. It's about the end user, you know, clicking on the wrong link or, or not, you know, paying attention to the, uh, you know, where the email came from and so on. So, 
So it's, you know, cybersecurity is everyone's business. Um, so that's something that I think is, uh, is now more mainstream. And you can see that a lot too uh, in companies where, uh, you know, the CISO now reports to the CEO um, as opposed mm -hmm. to reporting to the CIO. Yep. Uh, and then it's a board level discussion, which never used to be the case. Plus mm -hmm. the fact that we're all at home now, uh, the kind of the, the, uh, the lines between the, you know, the work plus, you know, the kind of the life balance and sometimes you're using the same device. So everything is intermingled in the sense that, uh, you know, people want to be secure and want to be, um, you know, use the right tools and be able to be aware of their, their kind of work environment as well as their personal life. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that the security awareness is everyone's business. And you, and you touched you touched a very a very sensitive topic, Dave, where which is the there is lack apparently lack of entry law entry level jobs in cybersecurity, right? Uh, because we we are telling all, every every single time these jokes, right? Someone is asking for an entry level, asking for a CISSP certification, like it's like what? <laughs> <laughs> how they can request that. But wh why do you think we have this issue, David? And how do you think we can solve this? How can we uh, leverage all these entry level folks that we are trying to get into cybersecurity and actually change the leadership mindset to, to engage with those people? What, what, what do you yeah, what? I, I think a lot of times they, companies they want to hire you for, for kind of the job you had as opposed to, uh, you know, see you as a candidate who has the aptitude to, to learn and expand in their role. And, and so they, you know, it's like the chicken and the egg. They want you for a job you already had. And if you didn't have that job, you know, how do you get that job? That's the mm -hmm. problem. And then um, I think this is why these entry, entry level positions are, are not being filled is because you know, the people that are, you know, perfect candidates to fill this position did not have these positions before. Mm -hmm. And the people that had these positions before are met very much in demand and they, they're not going to get the same exact job they had. Mm -hmm. They're going to get the next level up. They're more intermediary type of position. So you're like, you know, I think it's a catch 22. Um, and I think that organization now should, should look, you know, consider the, the organizational fit, the aptitude, uh, you know, the skill set that they, you know, they can learn on the job. So on the job training, OJT uh, is something that uh, needs to be, you know, needs to be happening um, more more so than it does today. That's perfect. And actually, uh, even though we are seeing this issue with uh, lack of entry level jobs, but even though I'm seeing a lot of people trying to get into this industry. So there is a lot of faith that they can achieve this goal, which is important, right? We need to keep having these people coming and want to learn more and engage in this area because things is gonna get worse. Yeah, absolutely, Rodrigo. And, and there's, no, uh, there's no excuse. You know, I just saw a post the other day of this truck driver and that basically went viral on LinkedIn uh, that, you know, it was waiting, waiting for, uh, for some shipment to load on his truck. And it was sitting, you know, with his laptop doing some, you know, some course on, on ethical hacking, mm -hmm. and which I thought was amazing. You know, you, you all you need is Wi-Fi and a laptop and, you know, all the information is out there. There are tons and tons of free courses. Uh, YouTube is a, is a wealth of resources. There's so much information out there uh, is available to you. So if you wanted to really get into this space, it's, uh, there's really no excuse. And then, and then the, the other piece is that once you have that knowledge and you immerse yourself in, in this space, the other piece is to, the, the way you get a job these days is by people you know. So you got to start creating that network of, of people that you can you can approach, you maybe get a mentor, uh, create a network of people, individuals just like yourself who are in the same exact position where they're trying to get into space. So you can, you, uh, you can go and, and, you know, have that support group internally you know, while you're doing your search and never give up there. I know I've talked to people that were searching for, you know, for six months and then they managed to get like that, you know, that initial job that propelled them to the next one, the next one, the next one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, how long it takes, it's uh, well worth it. I think the industry is great. I think that the, uh, there's so many opportunities as well that people are not aware of because sure. it's not all about pen testing mm -hmm. or ethical hacking. There are hundreds of different types of roles within the industry so you don't know what you don't know. I think mm -hmm. some people are not, they're not exposed to that. They don't know that they can apply for other positions as well as having a 
transferable skill set from their previous job that can be applied very easily to the new job or mm-hmm. a new job in cybersecurity, but because they're not aware that the roles exist, um, you know, it's not all about managing firewalls, right? There's just like, like I said, there's hundreds and not thousands of different roles in the industry. Do you have to have those technical skills for certain jobs, of course, for certain roles, but the soft skills are not, I would say, way not way more important but at least 50 50 on on the hard on the hard skills right depends on the the position we're applying so all these you the experience that one can have uh from previous positions can apply to a cyber security position because the soft skill is something that is really important right how to put yourself on or the client shoes right or or, or think as a, a people that can be attacked how can i help my 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 organization how can i help my clients to so empathy, communication, so all soft skills that not necessarily from a cybersecurity university you can you can learn, right? Yeah, I agree. It's all about organizational fit, aptitude, you know, desire to be part, um, and then continuous learning. You know, yeah. just uh, you know, have that curiosity to ask questions, and and uh, you know, again, there's no excuse these days. That all the information is available for you. And you mentioned right to create this network is. Super important. Also, I had a, I had an interview with Naomi Buckwalter. I know you know her, and basically we discussed about a one post that she she added to LinkedIn about the hidden uh, job market in cybersecurity, right? Where she posted like we do have this all th- all th- sort of things running background for someone to reach out to their network before even to put into the uh, over the internet that they are trying to get a, a, a new a new position uh, fulfilled, right? So yeah, absolutely. So that the hidden job market has always been there. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I completely agree. And then also, I think that you know, one should not also be picky. You know, get get that contract job, the ten eighty nine. You know, get the whatever, even if it's a for one one time project, whatever the case may be. Just get in there because while you're doing that, you're going to get exposed to new people. You're going to get exposed to new technologies. And then one thing lead to another. So don't be picky in terms of what the role is going to be and then wait for that perfect, perfect opportunity. Um, you know, a lot of times you can be an IT admin that just, uh, you know, manages some networks and, and so on. And all of a sudden there's an opening within the organization, you know, for to be an analyst or a security analyst or whatnot. So, it's much easier while you're already in there to get that next level job, um, aside from from just being out, you know, kind of unemployed or waiting for something to happen. That's perfect. That's a great, great uh, advice, David. And but one one thing more that I would like to discuss with you, David, because I know that as a fellow Canadian, I'm not sure if you 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 saw in the news a couple of weeks ago. I think it was last week or actually during March. Uh, but there is a, a potential strike that the employees want to do in a government agency here in Canada. And basically, they are discussing about uh, salaries, right? How to match their salaries with the private industry salary. Because we know the cybersecurity is a hot topic now. Uh, there is a lot of intermediate and, uh, and senior level jobs and positions to be filled. Uh, the salary is competitive, but apparently there's an issue with uh, government positions on on related to salary and, and benefits. I'm not sure if you saw that, David, but uh, I would pick I would like to pick your brain on this one. Well, it is kind of a touchy topic, but I, I can tell you that, um, you know, a lot of people just from my my experience have chosen, you know, government jobs, uh, you know, specifically because of kind of the job security associated with the and benefits associated with that. You know, so they have a trade-off, right? You you maybe get paid a little bit less, but your job is more secure, and it's maybe not as stressful as a public as a private sector. But again, they may not be true these days, um, and it's really much dependent. I think you can't pay everybody the same brush. I think there's there's I'm sure there's a very very stressful position in in the uh, in the public sector as well. Um, but um, I I think that uh, you know as always don't don't think the the you know grass is greener on the other side i and it's a free market right these people that are complaining about their salaries i mean it's a we're we're still a kind of a cap, you know cap, capitalist society you can just go ahead and you know quit and find that dream job of yours who pays double you know but uh it's it's uh 
I, I think there's always going to be people that complain about not getting enough money and so on. I think that uh, I think it's in the long run, it's, it's bad for everyone. I think people should just focus on doing what they do best and getting their yeah. skill set up, upgraded. And, uh, it, you know, if you're very much in demand and, you know, skill sets is needed and you fulfill a niche that not a lot of people do, you're going to get paid more. Mm -hmm. just, this is how the kind of the free market works. Makes super sense. David, my last question to you. Uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, you are already doing a lot. Not sure if you can fit more, more, more tasks, more jobs within your in, in, in one day, right? But we need more people doing this, right? Of course, with their, if they want to have these standard jobs, right, from nine to five, but doing things parallel, contributing to, to the community. What would be your advice to the cybersecurity community to do more and more things like we are trying to do right now? What, why this should be beneficial to everyone? Yeah, so, you know, I think we, you know, it's part of the education, part of giving back. So mm -hmm. I love like doing these because, again, it's giving back to the community. You can, um, you know, it's really tough to, you can't possibly accommodate everyone and knocking on your, on your virtual door and having conversation, talk shop. Mm -hmm. but perhaps if you're recording this and a lot of people, other people are watching it, they can get, you know, some insight of it, you know, without actually the need to, you know, it's a kind of a one to many approach. Um, sure. But uh, yeah, I think that the people should pick uh, the the areas where they feel they can contribute, whether it's uh, you know mentoring, whether it's uh, you know doing some podcasts, whether it's participating in events such as this one, uh, whether it's uh, writing blogs or even recording some you know short tidbits of uh, of insight, or even mm -hmm. even um, you know creating content on Twitter. I know a lot of people are creating these kind of like massive. Uh, you know, Twitter feeds where they provide some insight and feedback on industry. Um, and in a, in a, I love the fact that we are living in a time where it's like the long tail, you know, theory where, um, you know, anybody can be heard and anyone will have um, a marketplace because there are people out there that really, you know, are after not kind of the mainstream content that they can, you know, get from a mainstream media, but they're after, you know, things like this, where, where it's not, you know, kind of a mainstream, we're not, uh, you know, you know, big shot celebrities, or, or, you know, but we we're like, just, just like regular Joe's, right? We, we, we have day jobs, we have family life, mm -hmm. we have the real struggles, and we're just trying to get ahead and, and trying to get ahead on one side, and but also giving back to the community on the other. That's perfect. Uh, David, thank you very much for accepting being here today. I really appreciate it. And who knows once we all get vaccinated and we can travel, if you are around here in Toronto, just give me a call and we can meet face to face. Or if I, I go to, to New Jersey, I can give you a call also. Yeah, absolutely, Rodrigo. Love that. Again, I used to I used to live in Toronto, you know, a while back. So I love the town. Love to, to get together. And again, maybe once things open up in New York City, um, you know, go back to doing physical events, you're more than welcome to take part. Perfect, perfect. David, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. I hope you have a good day and good rest of the week. Thank you, Rodrigo. Looking forward. Bye -bye. So, what did you think? I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. Please, feel free to comment below what you think about this video. And guys, check the channel if you want to see more conversations like this. See you next week.